Welcome back to another live and amplified Indie Fusion podcast. I'm your host, Tom Quiet, and we are back at it again with another amazing podcast. Today, we have a very special guest joining us. We have the Vintage Yell coming just up the road here uh, from Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. I won't blow up your spot too much, but uh, <laughs> how's everything going? Great. It's going good. Awesome. Awesome. So you guys are uh, based out of the Metroplex. But you're not originally from like the Dallas area, correct? Chris, you're from. Uh, I'm from Irving, which is okay. right in the middle of everything as far as DFW. Um, and then moved, you know, a couple of times and was in Nashville for almost 20 years. But yeah, now I'm back in uh, Arlington, which is where yeah. the Cowboys play and all that. Yeah. So as a reference. Yeah. Right. I, I was born in Virginia, but I moved all over, lived in New Orleans, Georgia. Texas actually lived in Keller for a while growing up and uh, came back here um, around 2017. So gotcha. Gotcha. So you guys are in Jerry world right now. Is that correct? It's, it's like a couple miles up the road. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we could bicycle there. Fair. <laughs> fair, fair. We don't, it, but we yeah. could. <laughs> my dad, my dad always asked me if I've ever been to Jerry, Jerry world. And it's like, I've been by it, that new uh, Medal of Honor Museum that they're building right oh, yeah. next, right yeah. down the road. Uh, I've been there as we were doing something for the work or for my day job there. And that's about as close as I ever really want to get unless the Bears are playing the Cowboys and then, <laughs> then all bets are off. So the the fun fact, the first night that literally was it, moving into the home that I'm in now, uh, I had to stop moving and go play a corporate show inside the stadium. Oh, wow. So that was kind of a fun, it was an easy commute, but it <laughs> yeah. was like, wow. Yeah. It's, it's not a small room. No. <laughs> and we were yeah. like on the 50 yard line playing, you know, and full band and everything. So that was pretty, that's, pretty crazy. That's really cool. I, I do like what Dallas is doing. Like they seem to kind of understand how to keep everything in one area and just kind of make it super easy to commute if you're like a sports fan and you want to hang out all day so but um so how did you all like i, I kind of want to hear the story how did you all come together how did the vintage yell kind of come together me okay um <laughs> well I was actually working on a solo EP and a friend of ours, um, a mutual friend we had, um, suggested Chris to me and was like, if you need somebody to mix and master it for you, he's a really talented um, engineer and um, producer. And I was like, great. So Chris and I connected that way. And then we just kind of uh, had cool musical chemistry in the studio and we got along really well. And we ended up doing like a one-off live show together, um, just like a song swap type thing. And uh, Chris later, like after a couple months, it was it was pretty organic, like how it all developed um, and grew from that. And then uh, Chris eventually asked me if I wanted to be a part of a band. And I was like, heck yeah, I do. And uh, yeah, then the Vintage Elf was born. Nice. <laughs> And so when you guys started playing together as the vintage yell, what was kind of the thought process of like what sound you wanted to have? Was it like, yeah. Um, I think we knew we were going to be Americana indie rock, you know, that just from, you know, what we were as individuals, mm -hmm. uh, Jesse was probably a little more singer songwriter than i was um which was cool because that gave things you know a broader kind of aspect because we you know i knew we would have some songs that would be like that you know and then then we'd have more of the the more rockers type stuff yeah um so it it kind of just naturally happened i don't think we ever had like a plan like you know before we did anything like this is the kind of band we want to be i think just the songs that we brought to the table kind of defined what we were going to be. And so then once we were in the middle of it, doing it, it was like, oh, this is the kind of band that we are. And sure. so then it's like, okay. So th then you, then you kind of have a little more of a roadmap 
to as far as where you want to take it and do things and how you want to present it to the world yeah I, I, I think that's how it came to be i think the one underlining thing that we both like really love to is our tagline on our website says soulful americana texas and so i think we you know both were like anything that has a little soul or attitude and you know that's kind of like something that we really related on in both of like the different places we were coming from i think nice nice so it was kind of so basically it was really easy to kind of figure out what you were going to be and then just as you kind of sat down it came out organically is kind of the best way to word that one yeah I you know because so. it because it, it i think when you're making a record or if you're starting a band a, a lot of stuff just kind of happens mm -hmm. um even when you're recording a song uh, you, when you get it mixed and kind of get to sit back and look at it or listen to it for the first time as a listener so to speak uh i think it always tends to surprise you a little bit as far as how it comes out or how it sounds compared to what you thought it was going to be 100 percent, you know mm -hmm. um and i think that's what happened with a lot of stuff that we've done where it's like you know but I think surprised in a, in a good way, you know? Um, but yeah, I think the, the, those three taglines, I think really describes us pretty accurately as far as it's, we're Americana, but I would never call us just straight up Americana mm -hmm. because there's a lot more soul in there with kind of bluesy, you know, stuff that we do. And, but then there's some rock stuff and the, and the songwriter stuff. And so it's, it's the soulful Americana. And then the Texas influence is always there, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and so that really just bundles it all up into a pretty descriptive package. <laughs> and I mean, I think that's kind of the, the direction a lot of indie artists are going right now is because they don't necessarily have to fit in a straight up category anymore, where it's just mm -hmm. kind of like, oh, they're vintage yell. They pull a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of, you know, but you still kind of got to figure out your sound. That doesn't mean you can just be like, okay, we're going to be some, like a rant a band that just we play you know random like one night we'll play hip-hop the next night we'll play like rock or rap you know like whatever it is uh, but you still gotta kind of have your distinct sound which i which is really cool that it doesn't have to necessarily fit into a single category yeah yeah sure. and and one thing that we did know that we wanted to do was was to play live like as soon as possible uh, we didn't want to be one of those bands that just like rehearses all the time or just makes records, you know, and records and just put stuff out on the internet and that's mm -hmm. it, you know, spike the ball. We wanted to be a working live band as soon as we could. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of stuff that we did, even like from a writing aspect and, and getting the songs together and, and just getting other stuff together. I think it was always geared towards that. Like what, yeah. what is going to make a good live show? What's, what's going to work for audiences. And so I think that also was, was another factor as far as like kind of nudging us, you know, yeah. in, in a direction or keeping us, you know, in a direction as far as where we were going. Fair. Very fair. Now, how long have you guys been playing together? When did we, Since... we started the end of 22 we actually well, like, no, well we decided to start a band at the end of 22 we really yeah. started the beginning of like january february 2023 mm. we started um i asked her if she yeah. wanted to do it at the end of like in 22, no, yeah november or something yeah until yeah. till 2023 yeah gotcha. and you guys were working together prior to that right or just, just like we we had we had worked in the studio together on mm. on her solo material and then I think we may have played a show or two, like as a duo, just, and it would have been playing her material and like me just playing oh, guitar on it. That that, that yeah. was really the only, uh, working in the studio mainly was where I got the idea like this, like this would be cool to work together more. Um, and then playing that one show, I can't even remember where or when, but it was somewhere in that time period. So it was like, okay, we can we can do it on stage, and we can obviously work in the studio together. And then when I when the thing I was doing musically was kind of coming to an end, you know, um, and I wanted to do something different, that's when I texted her and said I'd like to start something new in the new year, and and I want you to be in it. Yeah, I think I think we were both like at a 
place of transition. Cause like when we were working together, I was thinking about putting out a solo EP, but I couldn't quite commit to it. It was like, I just felt like I, I didn't have, I don't know. I, I just didn't want to release something that I didn't have a full, like, that wasn't going to be like touring or like really able to promote really, really well. And so I was like kind of sitting on this project a little bit. And then Chris was exiting another project he was working on. So I feel like we we're both in like a transitional stage and voila, you know. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, so you guys have mentioned a couple of times that uh, your primary, that your main focus was to be a uh, play, actively playing shows. How often are you playing right now? Are you playing pretty consistently or? Yeah, uh, usually several times a month you know uh whatever that works out to be I mean, some 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 months are more than others you know yeah and and i will say too i don't think like playing live as much as we can was necessarily the goal i think playing like being like a live touring act like yeah. we you know not not just being like we're gonna be at this bar every single friday for the next three months like you know we we really have been try trying to be selective about like choosing shows in a smart way because we don't want to like fully oversaturate the DFW mm. market and like overplay our area. Mm. Um, so we're, I, I think that we do gig, you know, as, as much as we can within reason, mm -hmm. you know, with, we're yeah. still trying to keep it interesting, trying to make it not, you know, trying to make it so people still buy tickets if right. yeah. you know we have it a ticketed was, show it, it was yeah. a conscious decision because you know i i had come from the cover world you know of over the years you know as doing that whole thing you know mm. as well as doing the the nashville stuff um and so i i definitely did not want this band to be that i didn't want to be doing the whole four hour night playing in bars, doing covers, and then mixing some of your originals in. So we knew that that you couldn't just play two or three nights a week, you know, all month long doing those kind of gigs. So uh, we knew uh, up front it was going to be like, okay, we're, we're going to yeah, yeah. We're gonna definitely choose when and where we're going to play. And it's only going to be places where we can do the show. You know, and and sometimes we'll do something where we'll kind of mix in uh, some covers, but for the most part, when we play, it's it's doing the show. It's the mm -hmm. hour, 75, 90 minute show where it's, you know, from top to bottom. Um, and and then the goal was to like, OK, take that and expand it, you know, onto the road or regionally. Yeah, so. and I, I think that's a very smart, conscious decision, because I think that's a trap that a lot of musicians kind of fall in that, um, you know, they, they think, okay, the more I play, the better off things are going to be. And it's like, in theory, yes, but you have to be in a big enough area that can handle you playing three times a week because you have to be yeah. willing to drive three, four hours to a show just so you're not saturating your market because like, I mean, DFW is a little bit different because it's a big enough Metroplex right. that if you go play in, Irvin one night and then Dallas proper and then Fort Worth, you can kind of make it work. Cause I, um, right, in, for sure. in the back of my head, it feels like if you're in Dallas, you're not going to Fort Worth to see yeah, a show. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh yeah. You uh, can easily, it's from McKinney to Granbury, yeah, like anywhere. Uh, yeah. Like downtown Fort Worth to downtown Dallas is probably 45 minutes to an hour, probably mm -hmm. driving apart, something like that. Yeah give or take yeah so usually if if you're playing on one side of town then the you know the, the totally different crowd the opposite yeah. crowd is not gonna yeah but yeah you still i mean you're you're only gonna play a handful of times a month within the the area you know yeah. otherwise you, you need to travel and we have we, we've gone yeah. to austin and and uh had some other places at the which college are, station yeah nice. um we're planning uh we have a tour coming up in the fall too that we're going to be doing some traveling so and that'll be like a south southeastern well sorry southeastern and eastern uh coast like nice. kind of making a big football uh from dallas like new orleans and then the virginias and then nashville and and nice. uh other other yeah. spots yeah so that's, that's definitely cool. our goal is to be on the road more yeah. for sure 
Nice. That's really cool. I, I love that you're looking, You like you've got a good year, almost year and a half of playing shows in the DFW area and then traveling yeah. out a little bit. And now I think after, you know, especially uh, when uh, you reached out to me, what was that, about a month or so ago? I'm trying to remember I think now. so. It was shortly after you had interviewed Runaway Sky because yes. I'm good friends with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we tried to get it set up. I, so I've been for the last month or so just kind of slowly integrating myself into all your material and just kind of listening to everything you got. It's like, OK, yes, it's time to start making a bigger regional showcase and just see kind of what happens, you know? Yeah. Fingers so. crossed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> nice. um, so speaking of uh, like music and stuff like that, you did just release a new single on Friday. Uh, how, how's everything been going with that? Going good so far. Yeah. I mean, everybody's receiving it pretty well as you know, we're a new band. So, you know, numbers can, mean something and they can also mean nothing but you know so we're getting a good a good response on like spotify and on youtube and stuff like that because we did a music video for it um it's called if it hadn't been for love and it's actually a cover of uh, a steel driver song um that was like a bluegrass version and um we kind of like uh we call it throwing some vintage yell on it yes and uh just made it all swampy and new orleans feeling yeah jesse brought that one in and i had never heard the original um and you know the way we play it is like a slow kind of yeah bluesy swampy new orleans type thing and to me and lyrically the, the what the song's about and just the vibe i was like yeah you know cool then i heard the original which is like a fast kind of you know bluegrass train beady mm -hmm. and i was like the slow is like the way this song should be like if, right. if, if if i had written it i'd want it to do it like to do it like this um and so it, it was it was a cool it was a cool call on on her part as far as Brit, but but she's been good about that as far as bringing uh the same thing with uh, uh we do a version of she loves you by the beatles oh. but it is completely different than the original um and same thing brought it in and just did a you know crazy different arrangement on it nice i'm gonna have to go check out the original now i didn't know it was a cover song like oh really oh, oh yeah oh yeah I, I did not know like in the it's gotten to the point now where a lot of musicians are i don't want to say taking such creative liberties but they're putting such a twist on cover songs yeah. mm -hmm. that unless it's something that like i just happen to be into i'm not gonna know like it's yeah yeah you know, well i mean so. you would and you may hear the original and you still may not recognize it <laughs> yeah. it's 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 so different it's it's crazy um but yeah and 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 that was kind of the the guideline with doing covers or at least as much as we can yeah we, we, we try to if we're going to do a cover we try to do our own arrangement on it and 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 yeah what we call it you know put a little bit in jail on it as far as just you know making it weird treat, treat it like we had written it but uh but how we would do it as a band mm. and so that's kind of uh what guides us you know how to how to do stuff um and yeah so it, i'm really happy with it nice yeah it's definitely a really cool really cool song and you, you're right the like the more slow pace really caught my attention because I've, I've like recently i've been uh kind of listening to more like rocking songs that are a little bit more fast paced and so when i do get those opportunities to kind of listen to stuff that isn't quite that it's just like okay that grabs my attention and that's exactly what this song did mm -hmm. so well and, and i think vocally and guitar wise it gives you more space and time yeah to, to do some cool stuff like i i was really happy with the guitar stuff that i did as far as coming up with you know some lines that like yeah. he sings and then i interject a line and then and and same thing with her her vocals it it with the slower tempo it, it let her do some things that otherwise if you're doing it like the you know original which is about that fast you know there's just no time to do yeah. anything you know to get that emotive yeah that's a really yeah that's a really good way to put it yeah but we also um shot 
well, we we shot that video, but that was the first music video that we edited just ourselves <laughs> as a band. And um, so I think we we have a couple videos out now, but uh, yeah, we that one's been doing pretty good so far. I'm really proud of it. It's our little baby that we, you know, yeah, our we're, fir we're, our first edit. We're slowly <laughs> moving from having other people do it to to doing it all ourselves uh, for just a myriad of reasons, but. It, it just it's been working out yeah fair enough i i understand all of those reasons yeah <laughs> it's exactly it is exactly why i don't tend to like to hire anyone to do anything because i understand those reasons <laughs> well yeah it's you know without getting too much into it, it it's like one thing it's we found and i think music is this way video is this way when you get down to the end of the process like when the you're, gritty of it when yeah. you're editing yeah. a video or if you're mixing a song it's really hard to do that long distance mm -hmm. and it's hard to put that in words if if you're watching a, a video and you're like if someone hands you a rough cuff and rough cut um it's it's hard for me to verbally explain something like you know a, a little intricate a little minute change mm -hmm. and so it was kind of it was starting to drive us drive me crazy you know so i was like you know what okay for better or for worse like i yeah. want to be in the room i want to be yeah. standing in front of the the screen with the person editing at the very end to get these little things because it's like sometimes you can't even describe but someone will do like you know cut something a little different left to right and you're like that that right there okay stop mm -hmm. that's perfect and you can't there's no way to say that well, to type yeah. that out you and know? i think too because we're both like have such a strong creative opinion um it's like well chris produces all of our music as well so like now we have that creative control it's just you know create creatively and also like you know we're we're teaching ourselves to fish instead of getting a fish you know so yeah. I think a lot of independent artists, they do a lot of stuff themselves. They, you know, sure. record themselves. Yeah. They do their own social media. They do their own booking. You know, it's, it's just one other thing that we've just had, as we've gotten further along, we just had to adopt in one of, you know, just add it to our skill set. But it also creates more room for, like, creativity that we can we can do that now and so we, we enjoy the process and you and, know and we we and, like it yeah it's fun and it just i think there's more satisfaction in the end when you see the you know when you hear or see the finished product it's like yeah it, it it's for better or for worse that's that's just the way we want it you yeah. know and so there's just that feeling of uh maybe a little more sense of ownership yeah in it, you know, yeah that like yeah this is we we made this Fair. Very fair. It, you know, it as somebody, so I do a lot of video editing and stuff like that. Oh, cool. And a lot of times when I get a client that says they want to sit in on the edit, I will turn the project right back over to them and say, no, I am not letting you sit in <laughs> on this edit because, and it's not for any other reason than it slows down my process. For sure. Yeah. Right. Well, I would say I will add to what we just said, uh, because it's it's the same way with I think with with mixing uh mm -hmm. in the studio. I think it works best if you get it, like if if you're the editor or you're the mixing engineer, if you can get it maybe 70, 75% mm -hmm. done to where it's, you know, close to the finish line. And then have somebody come in, you know, and and like and sit there and and y'all can work out the the last little home stretch mm -hmm. thing together. I think that's that's a cool way. Yeah, I I I would not uh, want uh, I wouldn't want anybody sitting from the very get go with me mixing yeah. the song and she no. <laughs> and she, she edited she edited the last video, so I know she wouldn't want me there next to her when she's just getting it going because I'd be like, what does that do? What's that? What's that? You're you know. Right. And, and you wouldn't you wouldn't get anywhere. So I'm I'm totally with yeah. you on that. Yeah, for and sure. It, it, it's one of those things where I obviously I work with in more like marketing and news promotions and stuff like that. And so when we get people that come in, they don't know anything about video production or editing or anything. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, oh, <laughs> I want to sit in on this and help you edit. And it's like. 
you're only going to slow me down because this commercial, I already know exactly what I got to do. I'll have it done. If nobody bothers me, I'll have it done in an hour. If you come in, it's going to take this hour project or this hour edit, and it's going to make it a seven hour project. (laughs) Like, yeah. In a world where it's turnover, turnover, turnover. Yeah, that's true. Especially with stuff like in news. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So it is what it is. I'm sure my boss is going to listen to this and be like, don't ever say that again. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's, I mean, you're, you're hundred percent right. I've, I've known many like big mixing engineers and, and that's exactly how they do it. It's like, let me work for a couple hours and you can come in and we'll Mm -hmm. finish it together. Cause if we start it that way, we'll never get done. Oh yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, new song is out. W- what's kind of the plan as we look forward into the summer? Are you already kind of lining out the next releases, or are you more focused on getting this uh, this little, little southeastern tour um, uh, lined up first? There's only both. there's only one more tune. Mm-hmm. Um, well, one more single. What? Well, yeah, sorry, one more single. Um, so, Hatman for Love is out right now. Uh, at the end of July will be the last single uh, mm-hmm. off the second EP, uh, which is called uh, You Ain't Gonna Keep Me In The Blues. Um, and then right after that, like a week or two after that, August the, 2nd. the second EP comes out. So that's basically makes the complete album, if you will, if you want to mm-hmm. look at it that way with the first EP and the second EP being the 12 songs you know, together. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then we're going to have a uh, release show an album release show uh, right after that, like a week after that on the August 10th. August 10th. Um, so that takes us into late summer. Um, and then it'll be, and then in September is when we go on the Southeast yeah. East tour. Yeah. So we're kind of focusing on promoing uh, all, all of this stuff is leading up to the release of our second EP, which will be, you know, in tandem with the release of our vinyl where's our vinyl oh yeah show you our vinyl um so this is our here's the beautiful vinyl nice you've got that you've got the and then side and then they our 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 label will be very proud of us because they they love it and then we have a, a miniature version for just the the cd but so um we're not like putting like a full length album out on mm-hmm. online because we just decided to do two EPs. Yeah. Um so essentially EP1 is the first is side A of the record, EP2 is side B of the record. Yeah. And so all of the singles being released and even the first EP which is called set 1, our second EP will be called set 2 as nice. you would, as you would think. And um it's all leading up to the release of our vinyl and our our CD um that we're going to be celebrating on august 10th but it actually all comes out on august 2nd Mm -hmm. and then like he said in beginning middle september that kickstarts our tour and so that's kind of what we've been building up to for the past year yeah Yeah. we'll spend so everything will be out by august and then we'll spend the rest of the year so we'll we'll spend you know uh september through the end of the year just you know, gigging and promoting and just getting everything out there. And then, yeah. um, cause hopefully when we get back from, uh, that first tour in yeah. September, we'll have some other stuff because that we'd, we'd like to kind of just concentric circle that, you know, as far as go here and then come back and then go there, you know, do something in the Midwest, go out. Uh, we actually did a trip earlier. Uh, well, now it's been a little uh, out go? to west, out to uh, uh, New Mexico. Oh, Santa Fe. Yeah, um, which was half vacation, but also half uh, uh, gig scouting. Yeah, and and met with some promoters out there, and that would be really cool to go out there. So I mean, it it, it we definitely got our eye on on different parts of the country that would be cool to go out. So nice. hopefully we can line that stuff up um, nice. and spend the rest of the year doing that. You said a V word. I don't know what vacation is. What is that? <laughs> well, I I think the only way we we were able to pull it off was it was under the guise of that. It was mm-hmm. like let's all you know uh, our all spouses, vacation. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's like let's 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 all go out there and and it was just kind of like a like a mini week kind of thing, you know. But it's like and while we're out there, we'll you know check out you know because there's like a 
festival they have stuff mm -hmm. in in town in uh santa fe it's mm -hmm. actually a really cool town um and so we went there and and met people and talked to them and and got some things going uh so yeah so it's i, I think nowadays it's it's always that it you you try to roll them up together yeah. work, work and play fair very fair most of my days off end up becoming like live and amplified trips i i just came back from nashville uh last oh, monday yeah. or last su yeah monday sunday whatever day it was i don't even remember at this point <laughs> um and i come into i come into work and my boss is like you look like you're dead tired you just got back from vacation what's going on and i'm like i worked harder on these five days that i was <laughs> off yeah than i yeah. do any other day of the week here and she's like well i don't want to hear that but because <laughs> you know it's like i go out i drive drove out to nashville oh yeah that's a that was a whole day trip and yeah. then i had uh an average of 18 podcasts a day wow for like three days straight so how do you have a voice Man. um i don't know i've been really lucky on that one so i'm gonna just kind of kind of keep knocking well, so on that, wood that so. wasn't a vacation that was work if yeah. you're, you did that much yeah oh yeah for me it, it's always logistical it, it's when going on vacation there's always like this logistical stuff that you're having to juggle and the dogs and all that stuff and driving and and yeah so it it, it winds up being you know yeah you you get back and you're just like i need a couple of days of just right. doing nothing right you know to, re to recover yeah luckily my boss kind of understands what i do and she thinks it's really cool so it's kind of like i that first day i kind of get a pass but then after that it's like no you it, it's time to jump back into it we gotta go yeah. so you know yeah um if you guys are looking at going out to new mexico you should uh go a little bit further south and go into like southeast new mexico roswell in that area mm -hmm. they got a pretty they got a pretty it's a small scene but they they do pretty good for themselves. Oh, cool! Okay. Yeah, hey, we we are yeah we are not a uh, too got, proud to go to small scenes. We we got one foot <laughs> on the gas pedal at all times, so right. we're you know don't tempt yeah. us with a good time. Right, it, it's one of those it's one of those cities where they can bring in a big act because Roswell, New Mexico, is not a hard sell. Like right. you say, aliens, Such a tourist, yeah. yeah, yeah. You say aliens, and everybody's got their ears up. Um, Maybe we should write a song. Yeah. <laughs> right? Actually, there was a, uh, a not too long ago, there was a group that their car broke down in Roswell and they were stuck there for like three days. And they wrote a song about their experience in Roswell <laughs> waiting on their car to get fixed. Wow. So I was like, okay. And it's actually a really cool, kind of catchy song. So, oh, cool. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it is what it is. Oh, um, so. With everything kind of in play right now, you're in the process of releasing the second half of your of your EP or your second EP. I'd get the words out eventually. Yeah, uh, you're good. You got your second EP dropping, and then you'll be releasing the full vinyl and then the tour. What do you gotta do outside of music when you need a minute to kind of relax? I would love to hear your answer on this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling it's um, not much. Uh, when not doing music, yeah. What do you do to relax? Oh yeah, uh, that's a that's such a that that that's a loaded question. No, uh, uh, well, like I was saying, uh, 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 I have a wife and two dogs, mm -hmm. and so any any time that there's not something going on musically, it's basically like okay we're we're spending time either you know hanging out on the deck you know cooking or drinking or hanging out you know or or going on one of those vacation trips like you talk about where yeah. you get back and you're like that was a lot of work you know <laughs> but uh it's usually it, it usually doesn't stray much farther than that because you know it just feels like you're always doing you know when when mu music is your job yeah it seems like there's not a whole lot of days off you know, I mean, yeah. when, when we have quote unquote days off, we usually wind up filling them doing something anyway. I yeah. mean, if, if we're not like playing a gig, then we're. There's always something to do because you're running yeah. your own business. So it's like, yeah, it's just 
you have to very consciously like ha ha having a band for the first several years is like having your own business for the first several years where you're mm -hmm. putting in eight way, way more and yeah all that stuff and yeah so there, there's always something to do yeah yeah well i think i um my husband and i are coffee fanatics like we're yes. obsessed we had a coffee themed wedding it's a whole situation okay um <laughs> I'm letting you in on it easy right now, but he knows how far the addiction goes. Yeah. But we'll we'll go to coffee shops and we recent and we like my favorite way to decompress is either to go on a run or to watch endless hours of baking mm. competition shows. Fair. I don't know why, but watching someone else stress out about making something creative and then it it fails or succeeds is just so interesting to me. And I get so invested. My husband's like, I swear, you watching the baking show is like most people watching football. Like, <laughs> so you're saying you take pleasure in other people's misery. <laughs> well, they also win a cash prize. You want them to do well too. I literally, I like to sit around and watch other people stress. Well, no, you see, you watch them do well too. I mean, like, it's so emotional. You guys need to watch Great British Baker. Okay. I promise you won't regret it. <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's my downtime. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> you ready to go on the road with me yeah. <laughs> it's like stopping at every coffee shop all the way up it's gonna be a thing so no. yeah, but not up on netflix right <laughs> uh but to not oversell roswell they do have a nice little uh coffee spot that oh cool it was the first place that i ever found out or that i found out that coffee was more than folgers really yes Oh, friend. Wow. They you like go all the way to Roswell. <laughs> well, you see, my like that's all my parents drank. It was like Folgers or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Whatever was on sale. Uh, and I went to Roswell and they opened up this brand new uh, like coffee spot. And I, at the time, I wasn't a big drinker. So like Friday night, I was going there because they were playing like live acoustic sets. Like they'd have acoustic musicians in. It's like, okay, this is the kind of vibe I can get into. And they're like showing me all the different coffee beans from like Argentina and just like all the different stuff that they got. And I'm like, I don't know what this all means, but you know, that <laughs> looks impressive. Yeah. You know, so. Did they win you over? Are you like, are you a coffee fan now? Um, I haven't drank coffee in about seven years. Wow. So. Yes, I I will Can't say relate. it, but I do I do enjoy the occasional like latte that that that's okay. kind of where that's Respect. kind of yeah. Respect. It, it's the one thing that I can kind of get around, and as long as I don't do one like or have one like every day, I'm good. So there you go. When I, when I was drinking them daily, I was very caffeinated, <laughs> like <laughs> very caffeinated. So yeah, but you know. It is what it is. Um, so uh, for anybody that kind of wants to check out your music, any of that fun stuff, uh, where's the best place to find y'all? You can find us on any streaming platform. Obviously, like Spotify is great. Uh, you know, Apple Music, iTunes, all the things. Anywhere you listen to music, you can, you can find us. And then um, our YouTube page, we have um, all our music is on there, but also we have all our music videos, which uh, we're really proud of. And um, then obviously our Instagram and Facebook and everything that we do is the vintage yell. So at the vintage yell on like any platform. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned our website. Yeah. Or yeah, the vintage yell.com. Like you there can you go are. there. You can see all our shows posted on there. Um, if you ever want to come see us live and see if we talk a big game where if we're. That's kind of like <laughs> world headquarters. If you just yeah. go to the vintage uh there's the bio there's links to everything there's pictures there's our calendar you can get everything from there yeah awesome awesome so i don't usually ask this question i stopped asking this question a long time ago but uh, vintage yell i'm excited and nervous all at the same time <laughs> uh, i think i know what he's gonna say okay Where'd the name Vintage Yale come from? Uh, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> uh, who's taking it? So maybe we could do a group, a group ever. I'll say my part. You'll say you say the part that you. Oh, there's parts to this. It was a collaborative effort. 
Okay. Well, he, he wanted the word the, like he really wanted to have yeah. the word but the. But I think before, prior to that, uh, we had gotten to the point where, uh, I guess it was the very end of the year, going into the new year, where we 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 know we're going to be a band and we're getting everything going and we're, you know, working on website stuff and all that. It's like, we need a name. Like yeah. we, we've now come to the point where I think every band dreads, you know, as far as like, you got to come up with a name. But we really do need one, and especially, and we're going to be playing live soon. So, uh, yeah, it, I, it was, I was driving down to Austin, uh, and she was up in DFW. And so, it, in, you know, uh, it's, it's three hour drive one way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're on the phone and, and it was like, let's try to come up with a name from the drive, like from the drive down there and drive back. Like, yeah. it'd be great to have a name or at least something Something to go off yeah. of because, and I knew we knew a lot of the bands that you love started with the uh, yeah, and then I I liked the word vintage. I just feel like it's like a, I don't know, it's it's like a trendy word, but it's also kind of timeless. Mm -hmm. And so I really like third the word, word was the hard one. Yeah, so, so we had the and vintage. And it was just like spitballing the vintage every rocks, the vintage every word you can think of we tried and it was just you know um and then came across yell mm -hmm. um and um how many times like, through the alphabet did you have to go through before you landed on yell yeah, exactly Honestly. yeah you would think it would be yeah it, it didn't quite work like that but it almost felt like it did um he really thought of the word yell i actually i didn't like it at first i was like oh that sounds so aggressive like i don't know because she thought she was like... thinking actually like yell you know mm -hmm. um and i surprisingly i never never thought of it that way i mean a lot of times you know band names it, towards the end almost like just the sound of the name is kind of really what hits you the most other than just the actual words the and what meaning. they mean the, like the literal meaning but you uh, know i have to know the meaning behind yeah, yeah. everything we do yeah <laughs> she has this thing where it, she needs to know why we're doing something or why something is it's like you know. the songwriter in you it's like if you know like why it just <laughs> means more so like i can't you've seen the movie rain man right <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you um, if you i have to really mean what i say I have yeah. to like really authentically be able to like artistically stand behind it and be like, mm -hmm. I don't just, I didn't just pick it because it sounded cool. I picked it because I connected with it artistically. And I if you sign a contract with this one, <laughs> get ready because there's there's no skipping to the last page and signing. She and and it's a good thing. She is going to read every single word of the contract and totally make sure that everything is understood and all that yeah. which again is great because i just will not but and... when picking a band name it might not feel like that much of yeah. a benefit <laughs> sure. but so uh, the, the yell where the yell came from um so well my, now my no reason yeah my explanation was like the the yell is more like um like like uh singing like the vintage mm -hmm. yell is like you know otis redding you know, like um, maybe vintage yell, like who would that be? Like Janis Joplin, yeah. like Otis Redding, like yeah, James Brown, yeah, like that Aretha Franklin, you know, that that like classic singing, you know, bluesy thing. I was like, that that's in my mind, that's how I'm thinking of the vintage yell, you know, yeah. And so, once that, we, yeah, got that to made that sense point, to me, but like, because both of us have pretty like strong, belty voices yeah we, we so don't as like... you can probably tell through the microphone we, we 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 don't talk or we don't sing or speak quietly um we're always heard over a pa yeah. um and so you know they also kind of had that double meaning of that you know i, I think so and i think it works really well like if you're thinking especially now that you guys are like really in the mindset of booking out like bigger tours and going on longer tours it it what it looks good like on a yeah. on a billboard or on a poster and i in as we were talking about it i just started hearing it in my head like if you start doing like music festivals and stuff like that and you get introduced it's like the village yell you know and it just kind of all works and it makes sense like it's easy to say it's not one of these ridiculous names that has like 83 syllables in four words and you're just trying to get it out it just kind of flows you know 
Well, good. Yeah. We, yeah. It's definitely yeah. Grow, grown on me a yeah. lot and I, I really like it now. Yeah. yeah the, once, once we came upon it and kind of got behind it, I think it, uh, yeah, it, 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 it solidified itself as far yeah. as like, yeah, that, that, that feels right. We like morphed <laughs> into like the name and us kind of like morphed into each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Nice. See, I knew that was going to be a good question. I stopped. <laughs> I stopped asking you. You have one and you bargain for it. <laughs> no, no, no. Totally. Is she, I, I stopped asking that question because I was at a uh, bluegrass festival and one guy got really mad that I asked the question. Oh, and it's wow. like, you have a really cool name. How do you come up with that? And he's like, my grandpa was a drunk and he called it his cough medicine. So that's how we came up with the name. And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. And so then I just kind of stopped asking, oh, you know? I'm yeah. So I'm so sorry. Well, we, we get asked that all the time, actually. Yeah. That's one of the most well, common questions we have. I, I, I would probably say this as far as uh, like uh, advice for bands, like, don't name your band something that you don't mind like explaining yeah you know because more than likely somebody's going to ask you yeah. where it came from and, and it's one of those things where my podcast i build it on building a series of interviews with musicians like if i bring a musician on or a group on or a band on it's because i think okay this first one goes well we're going to have them back on a second time a third, and we're going to kind of build like a story story arc like this is all fake yeah. or something but you know and so having some unique questions each time kind of works and i don't know that that was just kind of a question i started shying away from and yeah well we're yeah. glad you asked it yeah yeah <laughs> awesome um so th that's kind of everything i had for tonight i really appreciate y'all for uh, jumping on. It was a great conversation. I will definitely have to try and make it up for the, you said August 10th was going to be the release show or the, yes, oh yeah. gosh, that'll be so awesome. Yeah, so, for uh, it's Saturday. Uh, okay. It'll be, you know, we probably won't go on until after nine o'clock or so. Okay. And it'll be up in the DFW area. Yeah. I'm it'll guessing. be in Fort Worth. Yeah. Um, okay. And I'll send you all the info on that too. I'll just send you a, a message. With uh, it. It's it's a, it's a club called the Cicada. Okay. A really cool, like good sized listening nice. room or, or venue. Nice. Um, I, yeah. I love it. I, the first time I ever went to Fort Worth kind of scared me of Fort Worth, but I think I'm kind of over it now because I went and helped a guy shoot a short film that he was wanting mm -hmm. to do. And he lived like up in like the super rich part of Dallas. Like gotcha. you pull, you pull into his house and it's like this small house is worth like, five million dollars you know like that <laughs> that that kind yeah. of ridiculousness and he was like okay uh second day we're going to this place and we were in the middle of the scariest part of fort worth i've ever seen in my life <laughs> and i grew up on the south side of chicago so there's not a whole lot that scares <laughs> me so wow. and so we pull in and we're just sitting out there while there's a drug deal going on one corner there's prostitutes sitting on another corner and i'm like Oh, somebody's gonna get shot today. So mm -hmm. this is gonna be fun. So yeah. But oh gosh. Well, you'll be all right. It'll be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, this... yeah. I figured I was in a just a bad part of town. Yeah. There's I, I feel like in any big city, there's a CD place like that, you know, yeah. around. I bet I promise you Dallas has one of those too. <laughs> oh <psh. Yeah. laughs> uh, we were it's called... we were looking we were looking for uh the, for this last video uh mm -hmm. we had to change our location. Uh, our location last minute um and we went out driving to look for a location like the day before we were going to shoot it and we probably drove through some parts of fort worth that you're talking about yeah fair. <laughs> things like fair. the southeast side and it was definitely but those were like the most interesting like cool visually visual, yeah you know? it was like oh that's such a cool like storefront or that or that or whatever but you're like yeah probably being out here at night sh you know mm -hmm. trying to shoot a video and holding not cheap guitars is yeah. probably not the best idea yep so that's that, when we switched it and and shot it where we shot it yeah that, that's kind of where my head was at it's like i don't really want to break out my thousand dollar camera with the yeah. three thousand dollars worth of accessories that i have just to for people to kind of look at it and they could go missing at any second i don't really want to do that so yeah yeah, yeah. um 
but no, that's cool. I, I've really appreciated this conversation. I've really enjoyed it, getting to listen to your music, watch your music videos. Um, yeah, I always really appreciate the uh, like the DIY aspect of it, especially when musicians are trying to make it work at every level. Yeah, for sure. So it, it's really cool. Well, thank um, you so much for having us. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. you enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate y'all. Um, let's hit them one more time with like the socials and stuff like that. Yeah, everything is just at the vintage yell. You can go to the vintage yell.com and you can find everything you'd ever want to know about us on our website. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you everybody for tuning in and uh, we will catch y'all later.